What's up everybody? If you have never tried Linux but you want to, now is a great time to get into it. Linux is becoming a more commonplace operating system for your everyday user and it's easier than ever to try out and install. Now I'm not going to be the guy who tells you that Linux is the overall perfect solution for your day-to-day -day computing uses because I don't know what your day-to-day -day computer situation is. If you want an operating system that is very secure, Linux is great for that. Now, I'm not going to tell you that viruses don't exist on the Linux platform because it has happened, but it is extremely rare that a Linux system gets hit with any virus. If you have an older system, something that's like 10 years old and you're ready to chuck it because it's running slow and becoming nearly unusable, before you do that, try installing Linux and see how it runs. You'll be very surprised at how much faster the system will operate. Linux is open source and therefore most distributions of Linux are free. There's also a ton of community support for Linux in this day and age. If you've run into a problem with your installation of Linux or you can't get something to work quite right, Chances are somebody else has run into that exact same problem and there's an answer to that solution somewhere on the internet. It's just a Google search away. Also, Linux respects your privacy. Most of these distributions are not gonna be collecting any data on you to sell to third parties. Another great thing about Linux is that you get a choice in your software. There are a ton of distributions, a ton of different flavors of Linux. I'm sure you can find one that works for you and it's not going to force you into an update that you don't want. Now, Linux may not be your total solution. If you want things to work in a way that you're familiar with and you don't want to get over that learning curve, Linux may not be the OS for you. But if you're willing to put in the time and see how something different works, you may find that Linux is a great solution. Now, I'm not saying that Linux is a perfect solution for every job out there. I personally am a video editor, so I use Windows on a day-to-day -day basis to edit videos. I found that Linux just doesn't work for me for that. But in other areas, the backbone server on my network, for example, is running Lubuntu, which is a great operating system. It's bulletproof. I basically turn it on, leave it alone, and it does its thing. Very low maintenance, and it's awesome for that. If you are wanting to try Linux for the first time, there are a couple of different distributions that I recommend. All of these distributions are Ubuntu based. The reason that I recommend Ubuntu as your base operating system to try out Linux for the first time is because there's a ton of community support for Ubuntu. Also, the most distributions that have the most support are Ubuntu based. Linux Mint, for example, is the Cadillac of Linux operating systems. It has all of the whistles and bells built right into the OS, so you don't have to go hunting for anything. You don't have to go looking for any extra software packages. Everything that you could possibly want, for the most part, is already built into Linux Mint. But for the most part, all of the terminal commands that work in Ubuntu should also work in Linux Mint. So if you get a little adventurous and you want to try out a tutorial that has terminal commands, those same commands that work in Ubuntu should also work in Mint. The operating system that we're going to try out in this tutorial is Zorin OS. I feel that for most Windows users, Zorin is going to have that familiar layout and everything should be in about the same place that a Windows user is used to. Now I'm sure other people are going to make their recommendations for which distribution you should use and they're going to put it in the comments section and tell me that I'm wrong. Don't listen to them. Listen to me. And only me. Ever. Regardless of which distribution you choose and which one you feel is right for you, the installation process is basically the same. And I'm going to meet you over at my computer and we're going to get into how to do that right now. Alright guys, so I'm going to show you how to make a bootable USB installer now. And no matter what project you're working on, these steps should be basically the same for making an OS installation USB. I also have a guide on how to make a multi-boot USB installer if you would be interested in that. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume that you only need to make one single operating system installation USB. So that's what we're going to do here. If you want to make a USB stick with multi-boot capability, check out my video on the Ultimate USB Toolkit. Okay, so there are a few different methods that you can use to install the Linux ISO that you want to install. The installation process is basically the same for everything. It's up to you to choose which distribution you want to use, but in this example, I'm going to use Zorin OS and I want to download Zorin Lite. So I've gone to ZorinOS.com, I've clicked on Lite, 
and here's the download button for that. I'm going to skip to download. It's a 64-bit computer that I'm installing this on, so I'm going to download 64-bit. It's not as simple as just clicking on this ISO. We need something to flash that ISO to a USB drive and make that USB drive bootable. For that, in this example, I'm going to use Rufus. So head over to rufus.ie, scroll down to the download section, and in this instance, it's Rufus 3.10. I'm going to click on that to download it. Once the ISO is finished downloading, you should see that in your downloads location, wherever that may be. And we've also got the Rufus 3.10 EXE here. At this point, plug a blank USB stick into your computer. It doesn't have to be blank, but this process is going to overwrite all of the data on that stick. So if there's anything on that stick that you want to back up, make sure you do that before you do this process. Open the Rufus.exe and you should see this. Now up here, you're going to select your USB drive that you want to overwrite. The one that I want to overwrite is indeed drive F. Here you're going to select disk or ISO image. Here we're going to select that ISO that we downloaded. In this case, Zorin OS. We're going to leave everything else as default here and hit start. And here it's giving us that final warning that everything on this USB stick is going to be erased. If you're ready to proceed, hit OK. This next part takes a few minutes. Just hang out and wait. And this is what it looks like when the process has completed. Just hit close and you're ready to use this USB stick as an installer. Now I'm going to use that USB stick that we just created to install the operating system to a computer. The first thing we do is plug that USB drive into the computer that we want to install the fresh operating system onto. So what I need to do now is boot from the USB install drive that we just made. To do this on my machine, when I power on, I have to repeatedly tap F9. That gets me to my boot device menu. Your boot device menu may be tied to a different key. Commonly, it's the escape key, delete, F12, or it could be something else. That's something you'll need to find out for your particular machine. But here we go. I'm going to power this up. I'm going to start tapping F9. And here's my boot menu. So I'm going to choose USB device. I'm going to select try or install Zorin OS. Now it's going to go through a process where it loads the OS from the USB stick. So now the Zorin OS has booted and we can look at this before we install it. But as you can see, this will be a very familiar layout as far as finding everything if you're used to the Windows operating system. So basically, we can go around and explore and see what we think of the operating system before we perform any kind of installation. I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to get right to the install. Okay, so to install Zorin OS, we come up here and right in the corner, up on the left corner, we've got this installation package right here. So we're going to double click that. And most of this is just read the step, do the step, get the banana. It's going to prompt you every step along the way. So this is my language of choice. Most of these are going to be by default for me. Keyboard layout for me again is English US. We have the option of downloading updates while installing. I'm going to just go ahead and leave that checked by default. I'm going to install the third party graphics software. And I'm going to check this just because I don't want to participate in the census. So here it's detected that I have a hard drive in the machine. I've already formatted the hard drive and thrown it in here. If you haven't formatted a hard drive and you have an operating system on this, basically if you choose this option right here, it's going to erase everything on your hard drive and install the OS to that. That's what I want in this instance. Um, we have the option of password protecting and encrypting the installation. I'm not going to do that. Uh, we can set up LVM to do snapshots of the installation. I'm not going to bother with that either. If you would want to do something like a dual boot scenario, something like that, you can do that in here. That's a little more complex and we're not going to get into that. I'm just going to go with this first option here, leave the rest of these unchecked, and click install now. I'm going to hit continue. This is where you choose your time zone. You click on the map. I am indeed in the New York time zone. So I'm going to hit continue. 
this is more fill in the blank stuff, I'm going to require a password to log in. That's up to you how you want to do this. This setup that I have right here is more secure. All right, so when the installation finishes up, we'll see this screen right here. We have the option to continue testing and running off of the USB stick, or we can hit restart now, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to restart this system. And at this point, you want to remove the USB stick. And as we can see here, we've got an installation of Zorin OS. I'm going to enter my password. And the big difference we see right away is that installer package that was up in the left corner is now gone. So what you'll notice right away is that this is a very familiar looking kind of layout here. Basically, you come down here to the lower left corner and you'll see that it's got shortcuts to all of your various places that you would need to get on your computer. If you need to install new software, this is your software center. Think of it as like the Microsoft Store. And this is a very easy way to go through and install new software that you may want to use. In addition to this, you can also type things that you're looking for down here. To access the Linux terminal, it's Control-Alt-T. And here you can type in your commands. Um, I believe this is the same as Ubuntu. So, yeah. So basically it's the same commands that you would use in uh, Ubuntu basically to get things done. So anything that would work on Ubuntu, I would imagine would work here in Zorin as well through the terminal. Uh, but that's a tutorial for another day. That's deeper stuff. We're not going to get into that now. We're going to basically just look at this as a operating system from day to day use. For your software, basically you can go through and you can see what you want in here. Uh, you can go through the different tabs and see what's available. For example, you can find probably Office in here, uh, Open Office or Libre. Yeah, here's LibreOffice files down here that you can get. Um, you can browse through different games. So this is Firefox booting for the first time. That took a little bit longer to boot than what I would be happy with. Let's try that again. To be fair, this is a 12 year old machine. A lot of people who are just making the change to Linux from Windows are probably Google Chrome users. I'm not gonna condemn or condone Chrome. I'm just gonna show how to install it on Linux. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but it is not in the software store so you can go to Chrome's web page, click on download Chrome. We're going to get the 64-bit.deb package. Accept and install. We're going to open it after it finishes downloading. And we're going to run... Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> it's taking a second. We're going to install this. We have to authenticate with the password that we set up. Okay, so now it looks like it should be installed. I'm going to close this out. And if we go to our internet tab over here, we see that we have Google Chrome. I'm going to see if it opens any faster than Firefox did. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm liking the performance over Firefox already. And we should be able to drag an item. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got Chrome on our, essentially on our taskbar down here. They're really taking a page out of Windows Playbook on how to lay out an operating system here. This is the software store down here, just like a fresh installation of Windows. And this would be your file explorer and anything else that you may need. But this video is running pretty long already, so I'm gonna get out of your hair. This is something that I'll let you install and you can play with on your own and check out and see what you can do with it. Um, it is pretty snappy as far as a, it's, it's a nice balance between a snappy operating system and a good looking operating system. So I think that if you give this a shot, you won't be disappointed. So I hope you found something useful in this video. If you did, consider hitting that subscribe button and leave a like. It really helps my channel grow. 
That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.